So, <laughs> the place is a mess. Still moving in. That's life. Hi, it's Lilius and Cage Queenaline, and I'm doing the seamstress tag. As always, I am really late to the party and jumping on the bandwagon at the last moment. But, uh, yeah, it looked like fun, and my last video didn't work out. So, I'll get to that later. Let's just do this. Yeah. So, uh, question one. Who are you? I'm Lilius Chisholm. I go by the name Cage Cooling online. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm a costume maker. I'm starting to become a costume maker. Um, and hopefully next year I'll be branching out into uh, clothing as well. Um, I'm a mum of two. I have a five-year-old and an eighteen-month-old, uh, and I'm at college doing textile design at the moment. Um, I mostly make costumes for performers, so cabaret, burlesque, um, bands, that kind of thing. But I'll pretty much turn my hand to anything. Um, see how it goes. To when and why did you start sewing? Um, I'm one of those people that always kind of sewed uh, <laughs> when I was a little kid. My mum sewed, um, a couple of my grannies sewed, and they... I'm not sure if they really made clothes, per se, um, but it was always in my family and always part of my life. I used to do cross stitch and stuff when I was little, um, embroidery and things like that. Not very well, obviously, I was a little kid. Um, I, the first thing I ever really made that I was proud of was when I was in first year, second year, so I would have been 12, 13, 14 maybe, um, and there was a school club called something like Crafty Capers, Crafty conundrums I don't know crafty something um where we could go and uh, get some fabric get a pattern make stuff um so I decided to make a teddy bear um, <laughs> which is in the garage somewhere it's not been unpacked yet I was hoping to kind of use it in this video but uh I don't know where it is um and he's a bit lopsided he's got some uh, some character um, <laughs> But I was I was so happy to to make him. I really enjoyed doing that, and because of that, at school I begged my dad for a sewing machine. And I thought of all the amazing things that I could make, mostly probably clothes for Barbies. I don't even know. Um, and he he bought me a sewing machine, like a second hand, um, pretty old machine. Uh, but that would have done the job. But because I didn't really know what I was doing, I uh, had some tension issues <laughs> um, and I probably wasn't threading up properly to be honest with you uh, and when it got stuck I just used to put my foot down on the pedal and power it until I thought it was going to work and that obviously didn't work. I just... Um, probably burn out the motor and uh, definitely um, it had a, a belt at the wheel with teeth and I took it apart recently to see what I'd actually done to it and I had uh, burnt this belt until it was absolutely smooth so uh, that machine only lasted about two weeks and I only went to my dad's at the weekends so um, <laughs> Yeah, no. And he didn't know how so he didn't know what to do with it, how to fix it, anything like that. I think we talked vaguely about possibly getting it repaired, but it never happened and it kinda just sat and gathered dust in a corner for a very long time until I picked it up when I was about twenty four, twenty five or something, um, with the attempt to fix it. Um, which never happened. And then um when my wee one was about a year old I decided that a sewing machine might be quite handy to have around the house. I could make uh, little bits and bobs, I could maybe make stuff for the kids, I could, well, the one kid at the time, um, maybe make Halloween costumes and stuff like that. 
Uh, and so my mother-in-law bought me a sewing machine for my birthday or my Christmas, uh, which was a Toyota, uh, and it's a great wee thing. Um, and I, hey, cheers. This is my cat. <laughs> Don't even know. It's just gonna be cat face. This this is just gonna be cat face now. <laughs> you're beautiful, but you're in the way. Can you come here. Okay. Sorry, kitty. There we go. There we go. Um. Yeah, I I started getting into it, and then I got into the idea of making masks and stuff like that. And uh, I got carried away one day and decided to make a costume for somebody and I loved it. I totally in just fell in love with the whole process. I bought a dress form in a charity shop for about £20 and it was ripped to shreds. Uh, so I hot glued it all back together. Uh, she was called Gertrude. <laughs> and I... Uh, oh, yeah. And I just had the time of my life doing it and decided that that was something that I wanted to do and um, then last year uh, I decided that I had got about as far as I could possibly get without going to any classes or learning anything. Sorry, I'm snuggling my cat throughout the whole lift video. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> um, so I decided to go to college and study textiles there um, and work out how to make things properly. Um, and that's been fantastic. I've learned how to create blocks to make, uh, I think a lot of people saw them slopers, to. Um, <sighs> there's just cat hair everywhere. Oh god. <laughs> To, to dress things up properly. Um, a lot of our courses are based like textile art and uh, textile design uh, for interiors and stuff like that. Um, but that's still been so amazing just to learn how to do things properly and it's given me a totally different look on how I'm making the costumes. Uh, what is your favorite and proudest make? Um, hmm. I don't know. Probably uh, one I finished quite recently, um, which was for a performer called Magenta Lust, who I'll tag down below, um, who uh, wanted a, a full story. Um, I was on a bus once and I came up with this idea of wouldn't it be amazing to have these suspenders that were like white fur um, and they went into sort of heels but with no back heel to them so that they would be like rabbit legs. Uh, so we came up with this whole idea of a white rabbit act um, and it got put to one side and never happened. <laughs> just, just, just cat. <laughs> God, hair everywhere, cat everywhere. You're just not helpful, Kitty. You're lovely, but you're not helpful. I'm sorry, darling. So we came up with this idea to um, have a white rabbit costume, um, but it never really happened. It uh, got put on the back burner and sort of thought about maybe one time. And then this group in Aberdeen were doing a Red Queen banquet um, and Magenta was going to be the white rabbit at this event. So we thought, oh brilliant, let's, let's do the white rabbit costume. But the idea of doing these suspenders with the high heels and stuff like that was just going to take well too much time and we had a deadline. Uh, so it got turned into this sort of steampunk style white rabbit burlesque costume. Uh, and I just, I love doing it. I love the, the, the event and the, um, the whole idea behind it. Uh, so the uh, picture, 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 that's a costume. <laughs> um, that's probably my proudest and my favourite make. And the R2-D2 as well, though there's less sewing in that so I've not really included that. Uh, yeah, R2-D2, 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 R2-D2. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, number four, what is your most disastrous make? Uh, there's been a lot. <laughs> um, you know what? The first dress I ever made, I r had this idea of a rag dress. I thought it would be really simple, a really great way to start. Um, and I'll just be stitching in lines pretty much to get this rag stuff together. So I stripped loads of material uh, of all these different kinds of textures and stuff um, to make this rag dress and stitched it all together. And it was so squint. So squint. Like the stitches just, ah, uh, it was. It was a whole realm of awful. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that didn't work out, but what I did in the end was I cut the skirt part off of it, which had worked quite well, and made a white bodice and put lace on top of it. I had pearls on it and shells, uh, and it was used for a Titania dress in the end, and I absolutely loved it. Um, so it was probably the most disastrous make because I think at the time when I put it on the dress form, I was in tears. Oh, Kitty, stop it! I was in tears because I just, it was just awful. Um, but looking back, I'm actually really proud of it now. Uh, uh, yeah, so, um, where is your favourite place to go fabric shopping? I live just near Dundee and there is not a lot of fabric shops in Dundee and I'm gonna be honest here I've not been to all of them so I'm gonna have to actually look into that at some point I don't have a car and I'm reliant on bus at my legs and uh, some of them are a little bit out of the city centre um, there's two in Dundee that I absolutely love one is called uh, Zenova Fabrics and it's in a shop called Home Hardware um, the guys there are fantastic um, because sometimes I'm buying so much at a time, they give me 10% off sometimes, or they'll give me half a meter free here and there. Um, they're really helpful, they, they know their fabrics mm -hmm. quite well. For people who don't sew, they, they know what they're talking about. They started off with this tiny little range of fabrics, um, barely anything, and they've branched out and any staple you can pretty much get there. Um, I've never really bought fabric online because I've always been a little bit wary of what the quality will be that I'm paying for. I really like to feel something in my hands before I buy it, but I've heard now of quite a lot of other places that are great. Um, but I do buy quite a bit online for, for lace elastics, um, trimmings, stuff like that I do tend to buy online. Uh, the other sewing shop in Dundee that I absolutely love, I do not know the name of, but it's a sari shop, uh, if you know Dundee, it's off the Perth Road. Um, and the family that run it, the mother often goes off to Dubai and buys these incredible fabrics and incredible trimmings that, I mean, I just don't think you get anywhere else other than Dubai. And they're just beautiful they're very expensive though obviously because she's bringing them back over herself and some of them are just spectacular um so i haven't bought much from there but i do plan to get some more in the future hopefully the funds uh six what is your most used pattern i do not buy patterns maybe it's something i should do um, but because I've learned how to draft blocks, <laughs> the majority of the time the thing that I'm thinking of making, um, I would have to alter a pattern that's out there so much already that I just draft it myself. It's quicker, it's easier and it doesn't cost me that much money and it means I have full control over what's happening for it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm quite a bit of a control freak. Oh, what? No, there's a thing, it's a computer. Shush. Cat! Cat, why? Good cat, why? Oh, just cat hair. Fluff. <laughs> um. Seven. What is your most dreaded sewing task? Um, hmm. 
I guess all the usual things like setting sleeves and stuff like that. I hate doing hand sewing. I used to love it and now I just cannot stand hand sewing. Unless it's unless it's something quick. Um You know what? The the worst thing I think is making that first cut into some really nice fabric. Knowing that the once you've cut that you're you're gonna have to do that right or else you're gonna have to buy it again that's pretty pretty awful especially when you get it wrong your favorite sewing task um i do love drafting i i do love drafting a pattern um it's kind of just zen it's quite nice oh uh and freehand embroidery i love sitting on the machine and just mm, lovely Again, it's really zen. Go into a nice little zone and get stuff done. It's nice. Um, favorite sewing entertainment. Uh, varies, doesn't it? Um, sometimes I'll put on comedy shows, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, ha uh, Old Harry's Game, um, Radio Four Friday Night Comedy Podcasts. Um, sometimes I'll just have a TV on in the background. Uh, I try and stick to nothing that I'm actually interested in, um, or something I've watched before. So I, I quite like putting on things like, uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and stuff like that. Things that, um, if I want to look over and watch for a couple of minutes, it's going to be enjoyable and stuff, but I can hear it and know what's going on because I've watched it before. Um, other than that music, just anything really depends on the mood I have heard though from a reliable source that, uh, jazz is really productive to have on in the background because it's not too relaxing um, and it's not too engaging depends on your opinion of jazz I guess but um, the the beat and stuff can actually make you really productive apparently I don't know I've not tried it yet I'm gonna have to printed or PDF patterns uh, again, don't use, don't use bot patterns. I will probably at some point, especially uh, I would quite like to get onto lingerie at some point and try bras and things. And I think the best idea is probably to start with a, a bot pattern for that um, and then adjust from there. But if I'm adjusting anyway, maybe just draft it myself. I do have a book for drafting lingerie. Don't know, find out. What sewing machine do you use? So I have a... I'm gonna put a picture of it. I've got that one. Um, a Quilter 404 I think is the new one that I've just got. Um, and it has a lot of different stitches and stuff which were great fun to try out on the first day. They will get used on some of them anyway will definitely be used for details and things like that uh, I think that could really make a costume just some of those stitch details um, but mostly I'm loving it because uh, the freehand embroidery is just beautiful like, it's just such a dream to do the toil although it was amazing to to start with um, by the end of me using it <laughs> never been serviced or anything by the end of me using it I was properly forcing the fabric through the feed dogs because it was just not doing the job and delicate and light fabrics would just get eaten by it in seconds um, heavy fabrics were too much for it so it had to be somewhere in the middle whereas this new one seems to be beautiful in the lighter fabrics um, if the heavier fabrics seem to be a problem with it I'm gonna buy the heavy duty singer um, which is on my my to buy a list if I need it um, and I've also got a brother overlocker as well which I've never even used I got it a couple of weeks ago and college deadlines have just been uh, so I've never even uh, really played with it I will once college deadlines are not there do you have any other hobbies 
I don't consider sewing a hobby for me. I consider this a career. I try and treat it like that. Um, as much as I enjoy it, I want to work my ass off at it and get as good as I can at it. Um, so I don't really consider it a hobby. Do I have hobbies in general? No, not really. I have two children. I don't get time for that. <laughs> I like to play the violin. I, I'm learning the violin. It's probably a better way of putting it. I'm not very good at it. Um, but the last, since I started college anyway, I've just not really had time at all. Which is a pain because of my first ever student loan payment, I bought myself an electric one. Uh, which is beautiful. Um, but actually getting the time to play it just doesn't happen. That is my seamstress tag and it was started by a blogger called Holly Souls, uh, who I will link down below um, and it's just 12 getting to know you kind of questions for sewers and stuff. I was on YouTube the other day just flicking through trying to find other sewing blogs and stuff and found this tag and was like this is brilliant because because of this tag I have found so many uh, vloggers who are seamstresses and, and makers of all sorts of different kinds and uh, it's just wonderful to hear where they're coming from, what they enjoy making. Uh, a lot of people seem to make clothes for themselves which I just have never really done. I made a Halloween costume this year um, <laughs> and that's the first time I've ever sewn something for myself. Oh, apart from once really early on, da, 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 da. Um, which I was a dress I ran up in a day uh, and was one of the the things that clicked in my head of like oh this is this is good we should we should probably think about this doing this all the time <laughs> um, yeah it's been amazing um, and I hope there's more seamstress tag things in the future because it's really fun so general kind of update, um, the last video I made I was talking about how uh, the, that weekend I was going to be taking Magenta away to Lion Cross FX Studios to have a life cast made of her face so that we had something reliable to make masks from for the future. Uh, and fun times. <laughs> um, and I made a time lapse of that process whilst we were doing it. We filmed a little intro, and I, I can't remember if we filmed an outro as well. And then we moved house. I went to edit the footage last week, I think, or earlier this week, I can't remember. And I can't get it. I can't get a hold of it. It's on my phone. I can see it on my phone. I plug it all in. I get up the thing, I can see all the photos, I can see three photos from that day, and that's it. I cannot access the other stuff. And it is breaking my heart. <laughs> um, I'm going to try a million and one different ways to try and get to it, um, but just not right now. I wanted to do this right now. Uh, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and please comment down below and let me know what you're making, what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. I would love to hear about it. I'd love to be more of this, bleh, I'd love to be more of a part of the seamstress sewing community. I know I'm not entirely a purely a seamstress, I do weird things, but it sounds amazing. Um, oh, you guys are incredible. I've been watching your videos non-stop all week. It's just been fantastic. Um, but please consider subscribing and usual guff here, right? Okay. Yeah. Well done. Love you. Bye.